Japanese raw selvage denim is known to be some of the best denim in the world, and it makes for some of the most incredible and most unique garments, whether they're denim jeans, denim jackets, denim shirts, and are engineered to replicate the elegance and the culture of the American 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, when everything was about ivy style, when everything was about that kind of rebellious attitude. The Japanese were so enthused by American culture, as well as icons like James Dean and Marlon Brando, and just the attitude, the style, the dress, the world, everything that surrounded what it meant to live an American lifestyle. And after World War II, there was a huge widespread of American goods, ranging from machinery to cuisine to clothing. And amongst that influx of imported American goods was a huge circulation of vintage Levi's denim that Americans had been wearing for years and years, had faded down, had broken down, already had an exquisitely soft feel. And it just had a look, it had that character, it had that attitude, it had that celebrity kind of connotation tied to the vintage Levi jean that started taking Japan by storm. And then what eventually started happening in the 1970s as well as the 1980s, these jeans became more expensive to buy, which was especially troubling for Japanese students because they didn't have a lot of money, and they also became harder to find as well. The supply of these vintage Levi's denim jeans was not enough to serve the demand, and basically, long story short, what ended up happening was that a few Japanese designers and entrepreneurs decided to start replicating these jeans on their own. And conveniently enough, they all found a home either within or around the Japanese region of Osaka and this is basically what started the whole Japanese selvage denim movement that is still alive and well today and for many of us takes up a huge chunk of our closet. The Osaka 5 of Japanese denim is credited to the entire Japanese selvage denim movement as a whole and is known for popularizing and perfecting what raw denim is today. These brands in no particular order are Studio The Artisan, Denim, Evisu, Full Count, and Warehouse & Co. And basically these five brands found their home base either in or around Osaka and there's a couple of myths and reasons why Osaka happened to just so be the convenient stomping ground for these brands to start up. And basically it's attributed to the centralized location of Osaka between the fabric mills as well as the cutters and sewers. Now this is a little bit of a myth. I'm not entirely sure if this is 100% true, but it would make a lot of sense. And I mean, it's not really unheard of to have an entire district that's known purely for manufacturing. So I really wouldn't be surprised if that's the reason why Osaka just so happened to be that centralized location. So why don't we start with the first of the Osaka 5. The first brand to my knowledge that started the Osaka 5 and was dedicated to replicating as well as perfecting the old vintage Levi jean was Studio The Artisan which was a brand that was started by Shigeharu Tagaki or Shigeharu Tagaki. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it. I've actually done a video on this before so if you want to see that definitely make sure to go check it out. But basically what happened with Studio The Artisan was that it was basically bred out of a necessity because basically what ended up happening was the degradation of the quality of denim especially in Japan was so rampant due to the cutting of costs as well as the invention of projectile looms to mass produce denim jeans started to take over the Japanese market and the people really just were not happy with the quality of these jeans they didn't like the look they didn't like the construction they didn't like the color and it doesn't necessarily have to do with the projectile loom itself but there definitely was not that kind of rugged very slubby texture that the old vintage Levi's used so basically Studio the Artisan and Shigeharu Togaki decided to try and perfect the raw denim jean as a whole and basically with Studio the Artisan and Shigeharu Haru Togaki did was they closely as possible replicated the Levi's vintage denim jean and began marketing and selling it as jeans that were basically made the way that they used to be. But the problem with them was that they were very, very expensive for something that Japanese students could otherwise find if they looked hard enough. So Studio the Artisan had a little bit of a rough start. But basically what they ended up doing was they didn't give up and they ended up making the original D01 jean, which is the jean that's credited to starting this whole movement and was actually a blend between French work workwear and American workwear and merge the two together to create what might be the ultimate jean, which features a cinch back, a natural indigo dye, a really nice clean straight leg, a beautiful selvage denim, and just the highest quality construction and fabric that you could find. And these jeans took off and they blew up Studio The Artisan as a brand, which then further inspired the next four brands that I'm going to name. The next brand from the Osaka 5 that we're going to talk about is Denim. And this is a brand that's very elusive. I don't think I've ever seen a pair of Denim Denim jeans in real life. I don't think I've ever seen anyone wear them. I just don't think they're as popular in America as they are in Japan. I could be wrong. Maybe it's just because I'm in New York. Maybe it's a little bit more of a localized thing, but Denim was to my knowledge, the second Osaka 5 denim brand that opened up and was started by brand owner Yoshiyuki Hayashi. And basically at the time in Japan, Denim was the most closely related brand in terms of appearance and construction to the old vintage Levi's that everybody had wanted in its rawest and purest form, even 
even all the way down to the red tab label on the back pocket. And I believe they actually got sued by Levi's for this as well. I'm not sure if that's a myth, but Levi's is notorious for suing brands that get anywhere remotely close to Levi jeans. So basically what Deneen did was they marketed and strongly served the purest of pure denim enthusiasts, as opposed to what Studio the Artisan was trying to do in terms of modernizing the old vintage jean. They catered to it, they gave in and they made these jeans almost to the T of how they were made before in order to create the closest replica that they possibly could have. Even to this day, Deneem still creates some of the highest quality and most closely replicated jeans of vintage Levi's that are available for purchase around the world. And again, this brand is very interesting because they're very quiet in terms of marketing, in terms of spokesmanship. I really don't see anything about these guys. It's also kind of hard to do research on them because nobody really seems to know anything concrete. A lot of this is just myth. But one thing I do know is that Warehouse & Co, which is another Osaka 5 brand, actually ended up buying out Deneem after trial and error with a bunch of different owners and has now given Deneem a permanent home and still manufactures high quality jeans to this day. They also make sportswear in terms of sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts to complement the quality denim jeans that they serve. The next brand of the Osaka 5 that came out was Evisu, which actually started off as Evis and then was later changed to Evisu. And almost everybody has seen Evisu, whether you're into raw selvage denim or not. Evisu is so much bigger of a brand than just a Japanese denim brand. And we've seen that more and more as the brand has grown throughout the 2000s, the 2010s. Evisu is a huge brand that is heavily inspired by hip hop and is one of the contributors to the Harajuku style of Tokyo, Japan, and is most renowned for the seagull painted logo on all of their denim products. These jeans became massively popular especially with the influx of hip-hop music and the huge rise in popularity. And basically, Evisu decided to really modernize and appeal to the younger audience of Japan with denim and with an entire collection to go along with it. This was brought about by very wide leg silhouettes, the hand-painted seagull logo on the denim jeans, on the denim jackets, as well as the other clothing that they offered as well. Now, Evisu has had an interesting history because they were counterfeited and replicated so many times over, especially in, I believe, believe the early 2000s, but over time Evisu was able to prevail and is still a huge brand to this day. Evisu was started in 1991 by Hidehako Yamane and basically Evisu was built upon a disdain for mass produced garments, garments that lacked in quality, garments that lacked in character. And Hidehako wanted to make his own rendition of replicated vintage Levi's, but with his own kind of modern spin. I don't believe the brand was aggressive at the time with the hip hop influence, but eventually it did get there, which I think was very smart because that's what branded Evisu as a whole. And I feel like it is also a contributing factor as towards why the fashion community, whether they're into raw denim or not, has a very clear idea of what Evisu is. The next Osaka 5 brand that I wanna talk about was actually started in 1992, a year after Evisu dropped. And it's a brand started by Mikiharu Suchita, and that brand's name is Full Count Jean Makers, or rather Full Count & Co. And basically, Full Count is my personal favorite Osaka 5 brand. Granted, I've never had a pair of Evisu, I've never had a pair of Deneem, I've never had a pair of Warehouse & Co. But just the look, the branding, the fits, the styling of Full Count, and the story behind it is really interesting, and romance is the denim jeans as well as the brand as a whole. Basically, from what I understand, legend has it that Mikiharu Suchita actually worked with Studio The artisan and worked closely with Shigeharu Takaki way before he left to begin with full count jean makers. And what his mission was was a little different from everybody else's. He wanted to make the most comfortable jeans that you could possibly make with some of the most silky, long staple, and durable cotton fibers that you could find in the world. And this led Miki Haru to finally stumble upon Zimbabwean cotton, which actually is some of the finest cotton ever produced. It is so lightweight yet durable. It has such a gorgeous, hairy, fuzzy texture to it. It tailors very well, it holds its shape, and it dyes absolutely beautifully. And the mission of Full Count was to create these jeans and not necessarily 100% replicate vintage Levi's to a T, but rather modernize them and give them a feel that was otherwise unheard of. So Mikiharu Suchita basically pioneered the idea of using Zimbabwe cotton to make raw selvage denim. And because of the soft yet shape retaining qualities of these jeans, they fade down to something that you would never even see in these old Levi's or any of these jeans for that matter. They have such a rich indigo color, a really gorgeous fading capability, a heavily slubbed out texture.
texture, as well as this very hairy fuzzy texture that you don't see in regular jeans. You just don't. Full Count's ethos is simple when creating denim products such as their jackets, as well as their jeans, as well as their shirts. They want to make a simply stylish product with the vintage touch and appeal, strong construction, but with a modern feel as well. The last Osaka 5 brand that came out was in 1995, and the name of this brand was Warehouse & Co., which is another interesting brand, closely akin to the name in terms of how elusive they are, but they definitely have a little bit more of a presence in America because shops in New York sell them like South Edge. I believe Blue and Green has them as well, but they're a little easier to find in America than Denim is. But basically, Warehouse & Co. was started by two brothers, Koji and Kenichi Shiotani. And much like Denim, they were also driven by the construction, the look, the feel, the fading, the fit, the style of vintage denim jeans. But they actually went back even further from what I understand. Dating all the way back to the 1930s, they checked out and archived a bunch of pieces to closely replicate jeans from the 1930s all the way to the 70s. And it's interesting to think about because I feel like Denim was more into replicating the fabric as opposed to the construction. And then Warehouse came around and they're obsessed with the construction, the fit, the style, the look. So it only made sense that Warehouse & Co. eventually bought out Denim and merged the two together to create what is probably the ultimate perfected vintage replica piece of jeans. And what's also interesting about Warehouse & Co. is that they actually actively search for what's called dead stock fabric, which basically means that they search through archival vintage stores, fabric stores, jobbers, buyers, and they're looking for vintage denim and vintage fabrics that have been sitting around for years and years, almost decades sometimes, to create these vintage repro jeans that they know and love. And this is also a little bit of a common practice in the United States as well, because brands like Left Field, Williamsburg Garment Company, TCB, and so on, oftentimes get their hands on dead stock cone mills, white oak denim, and create jeans with limited runs of these fabrics whenever they're able to get their hands on them because this fabric is so hard to find now, especially dead stock. These are some of the most coveted jeans that you could find. So the dead stock program is really an interesting program for raw denim enthusiasts that are very hardcore and settle for nothing but the best vintage repro pieces that they can get. Warehouse & Co. and Denim definitely are the closest that you will get to the heart of Japanese raw selvage denim as well as the old vintage Levi's that we all know and love because from what I understand even Levi's vintage collection or Levi's vintage clothing isn't as good as it once was. I have yet to get my hands on one of those pieces as well, but I'm gonna try and do that in a separate video, but I definitely wanna talk about that too. But anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed this historical lesson on Japanese denim, as well as the Osaka 5 that started this movement. I know it's a little bit of an all over the place video, and I've been wanting to make this video for a really long time. And if there's any historical inaccuracies or anything you guys wanna add, definitely let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to learn and I'm always happy to make corrections. And yeah, let's just have fun with it. And a little side note, I really had a lot of fun meeting so many of you guys at the Naked and Famous event last week. And if you guys have any pictures, definitely make sure to hit me up with those. I mean, you guys were great and I'm so sorry that I wasn't able to talk to everybody. I really tried my best, but it really made me feel so gratified and so appreciated that you guys loved my videos and you let me know just how much you love them. I mean, I couldn't have done any of this without you. So I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for your support, for the love, because you're really helping a dream that I've had since I was a kid come true. I mean, literally. So with that being said, thank you guys again from the bottom of my heart. I love and appreciate you guys. And like always, I'll see you next week.